Here is a quick video on how to import from Rhino and SolidWorks files into Modo and doing some rendering and doing some animation. The first thing you should do is watch this video that I put under my SolidWorks playlist because in this video I modeled the simple ring in SolidWorks and I'll show how to import it into Modo. SolidWorks playlist, I think it's number 12. I've built this in Rhino and I haven't done any animation to this. I don't have any plan, but I'll show you how I would animate maybe a wheel or the steering wheel and maybe the camera. You can also do animation in SolidWorks using a motion study, especially if you have uh, mates and assembly, because SolidWorks can render with photo view animation and it can also export to Modo full animation. I usually like to do it in Modo, but I do have to re-rig all of the mates. Where if you use a, a motor or springs, you could now do everything in SolidWorks. But that's a different topic. From uh, SolidWorks, you just go File Open. And Modo can open uh, SolidWorks Part and Assembly. If you are like me, using 2020, it cannot do it yet, this one. So if you're in 2017, 18, 19, you're fine. But 2020, uh, they haven't caught up yet. So if you're using this, you're better off in SolidWorks to save things as an STL or an LXO or Modo file was even better. And then go into Modo. When you import it, one thing that's going to happen, let me change it so you can see it. A lot of your SolidWorks are going to come like this. They're going to be gray out. And it's what we call a static model, means it's a bit like an instance. An instance is this, it's purple. Bring in from SolidWorks, you'll get a lot. Things will be in folder, first of all. So what we call folder, we call them group. They'll be in those little white folder. So you might need to uh, drag and drop like this to get it out of the folder. That's just to organize things. Control Z to undo. But the main thing you'll have to do the advantage of having this is that it's faster at uh, rendering time. But you cannot really texture this. I would recommend to go right click, change type, back to a mesh. And now it's that light blue means that it's a mesh. So you can do proper texturing and all of this. Same with this one. Right click, change type to mesh. And you could select shift click many of them. Right click, change type to mesh. Here is a quick uh, recap of Modo. Sometime when you open Modo, if someone else uses it, you might be in a different tab. So make sure you're in Modo, especially if you're a beginner. This one is great too. I, I use this one more and more. But if you're a beginner, trust me, stick to that one. Sometime only might be checked. So you might uh, want to uncheck only so you can see all of them. And sometimes you don't even see this. It's because uh, maybe my mistake, you click on that arrow here. So click in that uh, stripe and things will get back. Another thing that I recommend is having this on. So everything is shaded. Uh, sometimes you have locator on, so you'll see all of the locator. Now SolidWorks can bring a lot of locator. If you orbit using this, it might tilt. It might be because here you've got trackball to default. In Moto 14, the new one, uh, it's set by default to no, thank God but you might be on the older version. So make sure this is set to no. Also here, I like to have visibility. Sometimes I will turn that off. You see, it's the same as this guy. Uh, Sometimes I don't want to see texture locator, especially from SolidWorks. I do like to see camera and light. Sometimes you're in full view, it's this one. Sometimes you're in full screen. And make sure that you're on basics. I think it makes more sense. This is your camera. You might be set up to perspective, that's okay. If you don't see anything, press A or Shift A. Shift A is if you have something selected. To orbit, it's Alt, click and drag. To zoom, it's scroll. And to pan is Alt, Shift. And when I don't say right click, it's always left click. You can do all of this here. Here you've got all of the basic tool. We'll be using this a lot. And then you have more like deforming, um, making copies, dealing with the polygon, just the face, 
the points vertex means points we call them sometimes vertices edge think of this as a line two points connected and curves and the rest here you've got subcomponents so you could select an object and if you go in polygon it means now you can select the polygon oh auto save not a big fan of this I uh, usually go system preferences somewhere here turn that off so I was saying you can be in polygon select this you could be in edge select those edge or in uh, vertices and I'm middle clicking usually when I deal with a point I middle click and by default it's using a lasso a lot of people love it and I, I can understand why I grew up with a rectangle selection so I usually go right click lasso I prefer rectangle this is just me because uh, for a lot of other things actually a rectangle is uh, to do this it's also one two three you see one two three and five is the object mode or the item mode. and what we call an item it's one of those blue one so to make your life easier um, an item a mesh an object it's kind of the same thing we could also call it a layer uh, I really like the the way Modo works it's a bit like layer in Photoshop so you can unhide hide uh, the main thing I would have to, you to do first it's name like I did this is a simple scene but things get crowded name stuff especially when they come from CAD things like this when they are named you can start to uh, create hierarchy to parent things so you see the cover the bolt will be kind of the child of the cover so if I select um, the cover the bolt will go with it to move it's W I just press W or here you see W move tool E is rotate R is scaling and Q drops the tool gets you out so what I was trying to say is that you see underneath this we have a bottom cover the bottom is here so for sure I will drag and drop this into the cover so next time I grab the cover the bottom follow with it so for animation I often go to the model layout because it's very easy to click on timeline and have a time or you can use the setup usually what I would do with CAD data I would middle click and go geometry mesh cleanup just to clean up everything also I would go edit center to bonding box center so all of those have their center you know center back and make sure that there's no rotation on them or scaling if you have any go freeze rotation or scale then you have to think of the hierarchy so if I'm going to move the cover I want all of the rest to move so uh, the cover will be the dad of everything but if I move the steering wheel I want the rod and those to move with it so this is what I did I put the rod with it and the front accessory those one look I'll drag and drop them here so if I move this they move with it uh, if I rotate now when animating I like to uh, not put the animation here but put it on another object it's called a locator a locator is like a cross it's like a little center in space so you go uh, here add locator or you can go highlight them and it's in the list you see the locator is here here I'll move it up using W and here my steering wheel is on an angle so I'll go E and I'll match that angle roughly usually it's easier if you go control space bar to go to uh, from view I think because here you can see it better so control space bar go back to perspective now it's hard to see when it's uh, a null like this so I usually go on the display uh, sorry locator and I go shape custom and now I can see a cube I often like to use cone because they are easy to see and easy to grab axis here we want it up why and if you want it a little bit smaller you could go 350 mil and then move it up 
so it's easier to grab make sure it's still aligned we couldn't move it up here it would have been smarter if you want it shorter you can go 0.6 m here and it'll be shorter okay it's just easier to grab and I think it's better to have the animation on a separate layer such as this locator something like this so now I could call this uh, control C CTRL underscore uh, steering wheel so I know which one it is and this will be the dad of all of those so when I grab this the rest move and more important turn and I just realized it should uh, the wheel should be on it too so wheel should be here and then this belongs to the cover I should have a controller for the cover too but for now we'll keep it simple so when I move this they all move I hope I haven't lost you here but for the rest of the animation is pretty simple make sure you're at frame zero select the cover and I want it to start here and I put the position some keyframe I record the position of this cover at this frame then I go at frame let's say 60 and I move this here Oop, undo. and now it's recorded I don't even have to tell him now for the steering wheel I select the cone the cone by the way do not render was great so if you go f8 that's also the advantage of a locator it doesn't render and uh, then I go E and I record the rotation key and I could also record the position but we don't really need position here right now and here look I can turn this and now the wheel turn and here we could even exaggerate go like this I forgot to parent the back voila and if you want the wheel to turn you select the rotation and you key this and if you go E you can tell that it should be Z yeah so I can record on Z and at 60 I want it to turn clockwise so it should be this way the other way like this so how many turn I'm not sure we we'll just try it 120 degree so now if you look the wheel turn with the car if you want to fine-tune uh, things you can go F7 and this is the wheel animation if you don't see it well you can select this and press F or A, A to frame it and usually uh, this means slow fast slow um, a wheel will be pretty linear motion so you can go like this and you can do the same for this uh, the cover sorry so F7 and I think the cover would slow at the beginning but not as much maybe like this if you wanted the cover to start earlier uh, you can select the key and the frame and the value you know how far it went you can change all of this and uh, sometimes people like to go right click record OpenGL to movie and that will give you a, a little quick time and you would see the real speed if uh, you're gonna do more tweaking in um, in Modo you might want to convert it to a mesh meaning uh, or do a retopology so retopology you've got it here on the uh, automatic retopo and Modo will try its best to wrap a new mesh around it I've already done it here and he's gonna try to make everything out of quad if you're gonna do a lot of this uh, you see it's not bad There's still a bit of cleaning to do but uh, one it was really amazing it cost 200 bucks but it's a very good spend it's quad remesher just make sure hard edge is off unless you're doing something who's got very sharp edges like a a wrench then I would use this you just click here and this came out of it you see it was just perfect like I've used this a lot this is your final count this is only if you're gonna you know uh, come back and you know model and extrude things uh, 
if you want to do a quick extrude talking about this uh, B it's called bevel but it's the same as extrude here uh, and you can drag you see and here I'm in smooth mode it's what we call uh, shift tab you see so not smooth shift tab it's smooth it's called a subdivision surfaces I would kind of call this an organic to do a preview f8 make sure that this is set to camera otherwise when you dolly or pan it's just this one update uh, here we can see that we have one light it's a directional light not a big fan of that light I prefer using a soft box so I would go right click or many of them uh, change type to array light so you see now it's much more softer I don't think it's facing the right way and it's tiny it's because my object was huge R to scale now we can see it shining usually when you do rendering you want some sort, some sort of a flow so right click primitive plane R to scale you could set up click here it will do on all of them voila or more now we don't want to keep this so those numbers you want to get rid of it free scale and now we have some sort of a flow F8 and I could make it wider for sure Actually. this is the, um, the intensity of the light and to see the action you can hide it this is pause like, and put it back in. another sort of light that you have in a uh, model is your global lighting here environment so you've got a massive sphere like a warp shining photons of light everywhere and it's pretty nice I sometimes leave it to gray but you can uh, if you're going to do reflection things like this you might want to go f6 where you have bunch of presets and we could use an environment that's to get uh, very strong highlight things like this so any of those uh, let's try this one so you just double click you see the now you get very strong highlight you see it in the back you can come here so you only want one you can delete this and you can say you can turn those one on so now only the the back is transparent and that environment is doing until you go f6 and to create material I usually like to create masks so I would select the cover go M and you have to name it I would call it cover mat so we could change the color here a little bit uh, maybe a gray and the reflection specular means reflection I'll go to so it's not as reflective and now you're gonna see this is gonna change to a different gray now if you click here you would see here the the mask you see and this is also like Photoshop so now this one takes over this one so if I click here this is the main color so I could put a, a different tone or the reflection is here so if you go a hundred percent it's going to become kind of metallic then now you can see that environment reflecting uh, now metal doesn't have much color so you would go maybe 20 here but you could just use preset okay we are back um, <clears throat> sorry I had a crash so I had to uh, restart anyhow um, <clears throat> uh, so I had a crash and I had to restart so anyhow I think we were here talking about the material the chrome here it's chrome because this is very reflective look if I go back to it was for the default then uh, and to get good chrome uh, you will have to put this one quite high and this is the color and usually with metal you don't get much color so you have to bring this one down now if you wanted to make your own wood texture or use another type of texture 
then uh, you don't need the reflection that high put this back at 80 percent and if you just want a solid color you click here and you change it as we saw prior but you can also go add layer image map load image and I don't really have much to show you I'll just pick this one and uh, this should be applied all over the color it still need to be tweaked you see we can see the seam but uh, the texture is there so um, I'll get rid of this and now we're gonna start using um, presets because Modo has great preset and you might as well use some of them but even if you use preset it's good to have the mask done so I'll select the seat M rename the this is very important if you don't change the name uh, things wanna and I'll just change the color so you know which one it is voila so now the seat takes care of this voila um, there's gonna be quite a few things chrome so we're gonna take this shift click this this even the wheel why not what the hell? and even this actually so M I'll cut this chrome and I'll just change the color uh, to purple and now what we need to do and I'll make this black maybe the access I call that access so now we can press F6 and we've seen the environment but what we can do now is go on the material uh, we'll start with the metal chrome and uh, we could drag here I like to do it there so you can see very well but either way um, so we'll go just chrome so you see I can go here or I can just go to the chrome here Oh, if you give it a few seconds now we can see all of the chrome if you're not happy with uh, this uh, those highlight you can go here and under the rotation on Y you can add every 30 degree and you'll see the highlight moving uh, we can go 60 okay I'm quite happy with the zero um, now if you want to know which one is using what you click here and you see I'll tell you this is using this scroll and you could come here and this is the perpendicular reflection so you could say a little bit less uh, at, the, at the glazing angle um, now uh, for this we could choose a leather here this one is a bit overkill but whatever drag and drop here and if you give it a few seconds the leather is there so now I can click here and I can see it's a complex one but I can come here if I want it very rough I'll go 20 if I want it very shiny maybe 2 like polish I think it will look better rough 15 and if you wanted a darker brown you click here and you make it Voilà. Uh, the tire so they were I'm just gonna press here so it pulls the render uh, the tire they were part of this so you can select those wheel Actually, I'll do it one at a time go polygon and you can double click to select this part of the polygon I'll go M and I'll call this tire black and things that are black usually it's pretty black like almost like this and we'll give a bit more reflection three so now what I can do it's select the other one so you see the tile is black select this wheel and go polygon double click M and I can just give him the same one
Perfect. Um, I think for a material that's it. We oh the cover, my bad. Uh, what could we use? We could use uh, painted uh, car paint. That might be over over killing it, but we could try. Um, Try that one. Yeah. And it didn't work, maybe because it got the wrong one. So let's try this to the cover. Voila, now it worked. That's, I think, too much brown. Maybe we can make this white now, whatever. Uh, cool gray. It's always taking the tire, that's interesting. So put it here. And if this one is on top of the mahogany, uh, then the cool gray will take over. Still don't like it, but this is like uh, we can spend hours doing this. A little bit of a scene study. This is a scene that I render. The final is something like this. This is some other shot I think from it. And this one. For the texture you could go online. Here it's a brick. Brick texture map. Voila. So you could use for look for a white one and those one are more for uh, displacement or bump. You can also make your own out of here using Photoshop and same for the wood. Uh, here what I end up doing it's using a, a collection made by Richard Yacht, uh, the author of this book and it's only 30 bucks and they are excellent and I tweak it sometimes I simplify them but uh, this is a great little pack to uh, purchase for model. It's on gumroad.com and his book is also great it's on Amazon light for visual artists. So here I think I just drag and drop those two and I tweak them um, on my final thing. Here what I did, I simplified them a little bit just to show you how you would make them from scratch. So this scene is extremely simple. I have one area light shining in the front. You see it has a little bit of white and it's a little bit brighter. And my environment on this setup is just a kitchen light, I think, from the browser. I tune it down a bit, you see 0.82. So lighting wise, that's it, there's nothing more. And maybe I put a little bit of vignette. Yeah, I did put 80% of vignette to darken here a little bit. And a little bit of tone map to reduce the saturation. But otherwise, that's it. If we look at my uh, setup, here I think it's a default, yeah, default chrome. I would usually tune that down a little bit to 80 and 80. So it's, I don't like to see things at 100%. And I don't even remember what I use here. Uh, I think I made this one from scratch with a pump that I reused. So the material itself, you see it has 3% of reflection. We can see it here. I think it's not too bad. I would go even a lighter, 2.5. And this is how shiny. So if you go zero, it'll look like the wall is really highly polished. It looks like those uh, reflections are almost wet. If you go more, it'll be a little bit rough. It'll be more diffuse. So if I go a lot, you'll see it here. They'll kind of almost disappear. They'll just blend it. Looks like you're shooting a lot of diffuse light here. That's less realistic. So I'll go uh, maybe 12. 
and that's it I'm not using the color here I am using this so if you wanted a broken white you would do that here you see now we have a little bit of blue in the wall and for the relief for the bump or displacement I'm using this and this is from Richard Yacht he was using also this normal map but here I even turn it off to simplify it make sure your low is at minus 100 I do this for displacement and bump or bump uh, so when you bring this map you go add image load image and then here you go surface so you'll use bump or displacement or both and if you want to learn about normal map uh, you can google it I did repeat it so the tile looks smaller it's here 5 and 4 better to use UV map you can use, look for some videos because that's a big subject but it's not that hard and if everything was model in model your UV map should be already quite there uh, what else oh yeah uh, so you see how reflective it is and uh, here it is bump map I'm not using it but here usually it's, you don't use 80 mil usually you use 2-3 mil but my scene is um, very small that's why I had to do this so look if I went uh, 20 mil you'll see that the break now are very shallow yeah you see you can barely see them but like I say usually you won't go that high but you'll have to tweak this for sure for the wood floor I think it's even easier if I click here it'll show me the wood floor so the actual material it's even less reflective uh, we can see a bit the shininess here I would uh, spread that more actually 35 here I'm using also displacement so we can see it here I'll go here more like 2.6 just to show you so I think this is also from Richard but you could use one from the internet or one of your photo I did repeat it here 1818 a little bit and uh, then I make it into a bump or I use this bump I forgot I think this is his um, and make this minus one of it and it's sorry it's a displacement and then I went here to uh, play with the height okay you've got it um, if you were to do some sort of animation uh, always organize things well here so you could put the wheel in the same group so control here control G to create a, a group Call, call that wheel. I'm gonna actually make the cover the dad of uh, most things. So the bottom should be under the cover. The steering wheel can be part of the cover too. And did I've got everyone? And the wheel. Voila. So now if you grab the cover and move it, yeah, everything moved. So if you wanted to do a simple animation, um, it's much nicer you might have because you have a timeline here uh, you might have to go default and pick again the camera voila so you'll select the cover and one second is roughly 24 so this is basically four seconds so you can just say W and at frame one you want the toy to be here so you just click on the position sorry you could also do the rotation position on X and now you can just move it to uh, we'll just go to 80 and move it here and you see it passes by so now if you scrub the animation is done if we play play we can see it so Q to drop my tool now if I wanted this to turn I could link this to the wheel but so this is a very uh, simple animation so we can go like this press F7 you can play with if you took the cover you could play with the timing of this so when it's flat it doesn't move when it's very steep it goes fast and slower you could also change you know when it starts camera so now what we can do we can create a new camera uh, create camera and we can call it uh, shot 01 here what I can do make sure camera is visible here otherwise you won't see it and um, here we can go like this 
can actually go back to model so then we see it and the camera is here you see so I can just go W and move it same way you would move an object rotate so it's looking the right direction we might want to move it up a little bit E so it's looking down you can also look through it voila sometimes it's easier to just do like this you're actually moving the camera now voila so if you go back here and if you look through your camera you can see this so now you can also animate the camera so um, sometimes what I would do I would go uh, layout palette and I will go get a 3d view it's just a mini one floating and I will go on the top here this is very useful because then you can see everything and you could set that to reflection or other mode uh, the main thing here is to see your camera so the camera you can go shift a to see it it's very tiny here it's because my scene is huge but now you see I can see the camera if I go W and I can move it so now we can actually animate this so I can say at the beginning so now I'm looking through the camera looking here and I can move the camera so I can key this even the rotation and at frame 80 I can uh, animate the camera so maybe passing like this and we can also go in perspective and maybe the camera will go down a bit and now we can look at it uh, voila that's better something like this so now what we've done we've animated the object and the camera it's nothing really fancy but um, what we can do now it's tested so I can go F8 make it very small so it doesn't take too long to render and you can see my object and I can move it and oops I'm looking at the wrong camera okay if here we want to do a depth of field uh, that would be slow to render but it would look good um, we can select the camera make sure it's the same one here and here camera effect depth of field to set the focus you click on autofocus and now here is, let's say I want this to be clear I go control F so now that number is for here and we don't see much blur it's because my car is so big that I'm gonna have to go lower the lower the f-stop the more blur and here I might have to go very low you see it's still there it's because my car is huge yeah now I start to see the blur a little bit and the iris here is the the shutter so usually I put four but the iris is not that important it just looks a bit better if you use depth of fill uh, you'll have to go here uh, under shading render first of all you have to tell him which camera you're rendering so shot one here how many frames I'm only doing 80 and under settings you will have to boost uh, if you do a steel I would go quite high uh, this I would go 0.1 to remove a, for a steel to remove a lot of noise uh, and this we could go way higher 256 or 512 now the key thing with depth of field that's the shadow here 256 is the anti-aliasing this one this will have to go quite high 128 maybe 256 but for an animation it's really killing it um, but maybe I'll have time to render it overnight so if you just want to do a still you'll go um, F9 and render that still so you see now I'm reading the dark in the blur so I can go back and uh, shot one, come back here. Maybe we can bring this higher to see what it does. So it does need to be quite low. Wow. Yeah, now I'm starting to see it.
Okay, we'll stick to point one. And then you basically have to uh, to render this. So if you want to make a movie, a still, you know, it's uh, F9, you wait and you save it. And you can, uh, let me do a still so you can see it. So if I do a still, I think my camera is way too high still. So I'll go back here. Shot one. Uh, this is the first thing I did, as you know. So I could just do this. Hold, and it would record a new keyframe. And if I go to AD, actually AD was not too bad. I could hold pan again, dolly a bit. And now we'll, uh, voila, the new key should be adjusted. Yeah. Yeah, that's much more pretty. Yeah, something. So to fine tune a little bit, um, let me go back here and I'll go 0.2, so that's not too much. Uh, on the shading, final color, you can also do a vignette to darken a bit the edges here. So vignette, we can go 160, 203, you see, it's darker. To remove a bit of the saturation, we could go tone map uh, 15. And if we want this to glow, we could put the bloom, but we'll have to uh, test the bloom before. So if I just want to do one frame, uh, let's say this one, I'll go render F9. So it's rendering, it's uh, slow, it's normal no? when you have that much reflection. So it's getting finished, perfect. So now we can see the bloom. See how shiny it is here. So if you want less, you have to go higher. So maybe 160. And uh, this is how wide it glows. So we could go maybe three. Try that. Uh, maybe even less, 190. Yeah, that's pretty good. And the vignette, if we wanted more, could go 400 to darken this or less. Maybe let's go less, 140 and uh, tone mapping uh, and save that's it if you want to uh, render a movie like here we've got a d frame uh, you would go render animation and me you could make a movie straight there and that will do an mp4 but i would like to go through a photoshop so usually i would do a sequence so we would render 80 frame like you just saw, one by one, and then I open them. That could take a night, huh? it could take a long time. And then I open them in Photoshop and save them as a movie, unless you just do this here. So I'll render one tonight. So when you will be done rendering those 80 frame, it took a while. Huh? So you have all of those images, and then what you want to do, it's convert it to a movie like this. Uh, you see, it's nothing fancy. Uh, so how did I do that? You just go in Photoshop, I think it might be the easiest. File open. You find your folder. So this is where I render all of those images. You pick the first one. Make sure you have image sequence checked. Open. You can go 29, 30. I usually use 24 frames per second. And here, if you don't see the timeline often when you open it, you don't see the timeline. So you have to go window uh, timeline. And here you can do a lot. Huh? You can even do editing. Uh, I don't use, uh, I use Camtasia for small editing, but what I like here is that you can play back. I just press space bar to play back the video. Uh, the second time it plays real time, but what I really like here is that you could do image size, you could resize it, you could do a blur, you could color correct. Uh, if you want to do any of this, you have to right click and convert to smart object, and then you'll be able to do all of those filters. But the main thing you can do here, it's take an image sequence and render it as a movie. So you go File, Export, Render to Video. By default, it's using the H.264, which is fine to me. With me, uh, you give the path and you say Render. 